Hey Z Stars, what's good in the hood? It's your girl Zara, aka Epic Zara, and I'm back with another video. Thank you so much for joining me. If you've never been here before, welcome. My name is Zara, and we do a lot of amazing things on this channel. Now today, I'd like to talk to you all about the one thing that keeps 99% of us at the same length, hair-wise. Now I know that probably sounds like a hyperbole, but a lot of people struggle with this, and I'm not gonna tell you what it is. Right now, you guys have to watch the entire video to find out what it is, as well as the seven ways to solve this very, very common issue. Now let's get right into the video, but of course, before we do, you guys, please be sure to follow me on Instagram if you'd like to see my own natural hair journey, as well as my awesome photography or whatever. Be sure to follow me on Twitter if you'd like to communicate with me, chat with me, ask me questions while you're watching the video, etc., etc., etc. Last but never least, of course, please be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think this one thing is. Be sure to share this video with your friends and your loved ones, especially those of them that have been stuck at the same length for years. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that you enjoy this type of content and motivates me to keep making videos like this for you all. And be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you know exactly when I post a new video. Now I'm going to give you guys a few moments to subscribe right now. Okay, so you should be subscribed and your notification should be on. Now, without any further ado, let's get right into this video. Now, I know all of you are itching to know at this point, and the one reason why your hair is not growing is because you are not retaining any length. Guys, I'm totally messing with you. Obviously, I'm not going to leave you hanging. I low-key could drop this mic and walk away, but we need to talk about length retention, what it is, and how to actually start retaining length if you're not already. Ladies, gentlemen, everyone in between, people that don't identify with any gender, you know. I love to help all of you. I love to be here for you. So we're gonna get to the root of these issues and solve them. Now, whether your hair grows four inches a year or 10 inches a year, how much of that growth that you actually see is determined by how much length you retain. What exactly is length retention? Now, I scoured the trusty Westy internet and all of the definitions I saw to me were not full bodied enough so I came up with one of my own and we're going to read it on a different screen with another window because you know I like to be extra with my edits so let's check that out Unless you've experienced some sort of trauma or have a condition that prevents hair from growing, your hair is definitely growing, no matter how slowly it's growing from your scalp. On average, a human being grows half an inch of hair every month. That's roughly six inches of hair per year. There are people that grow hair less than that, and there are people that grow hair more than that. Sometimes extremes of up to 12 inches, at least I've heard that. It's more anecdotal, I'd have to see some documents that prove that. But that short digression aside, the point I'm just trying to make is that everyone is predisposed to grow hair on all parts of their body, especially their head. A lot of us are stagnant when it comes to our hair journeys because we're unable to retain the length that we are actually growing. Now, I've definitely experienced my own stagnancy in my hair journey, and I've been able to overcome it with the tips I'm about to give to you all. But aside from my own heat damage, which I suffered, and I'll link that video for you all right here so you can check it out, my hair was breaking off at the rate that it was growing. So you're not alone, I'm here for you, and I've experienced this myself. So everything I'm about to teach you all is going to help you overcome your own hair length plateau. A lot of naturals over manipulate their hair. From using heat to changing your styles every day to having your hands in your hair constantly, it's just too much for your hair to handle. What does constant manipulation do to your hair? Well, it removes moisture, it causes splits, it causes breakage, and it causes the hair to weaken more quickly. Imagine this, you have a rope. If you leave the rope be, if you don't use it, if you don't touch it, the rope will look good as new a decade down the line. Now, 
Now, if you're constantly using that rope, it's going to show signs of wear and tear relatively quickly. Why is that? Because you're manipulating it. Now, with your hair, you don't have to do anything to it. If you notice, a lot of other races tend not to style their hair. Now, it's not every individual, of course, but those people that leave their hair in ponytails or buns typically have much healthier hair simply because they're not fussing with it. They're not stressing it by not manipulating it. Now, I personally am a very, very lazy natural hair babe. I don't like to do anything with my hair. I do what I can to take care of it, but aside from that, I'm not gonna be styling my hair. I'm not gonna be doing my edges every day. I don't have that kind of energy from. And the less I manipulate my hair, the longer I leave it in certain protective styles, the healthier it is, the less it breaks, the more moisture it retains, and the more I see length. Deep conditioning is so important for length retention, y'all. Moisture is the ultimate key for length retention, for moisture retention, and for minimizing splitting and breakage. Now, there are a lot of naturals that don't deep condition regularly, and I had to learn the hard way that deep conditioning is a very important part of a healthy hair regimen. It's so important to deep condition after you shampoo your hair. Now, there are a number of natural haired ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between, and those who don't identify with the gender, that actually deep condition prior to shampooing, but I feel that defeats the purpose because ultimately the purpose of deep conditioner is to impart moisture to your locks. What you can do prior to shampooing to actually reduce the likelihood of hygro fatigue, as well as help your hair retain more moisture following the very stripping shampoo process is to pre-poo. Now I personally like to pre-poo with oil because it repels water and prevents my hair from experiencing hygro fatigue. Now, if you have low porosity hair, it's extremely important to make sure you use steam or heat to deep condition your hair. Now, when you have low porosity hair, like I do, your hair cuticles are tightly packed together. They're pretty much constricting one another. So it's extremely important to apply steam or heat so that the cuticles will relax and open up to allow the moisture to penetrate the hair shaft. Now for me, I prefer the wet heat of steam because not only is the moisture from my deep conditioner entering my hair shaft, the water from the steam is as well. So it's more of like a double treatment for me, at least that's how I conceptualize it. And I've noticed that my hair responds really, really well to steam treatments. Now, when it comes to balancing your protein and your moisture, that's also extremely important. Now, I'm not going to talk about that too much because I did talk about that in the video that precedes this one. So I'm going to link that right here for you all. You all can go and check that out after this video. But basically, a quick summary of what that entails is this. If your hair has too much moisture, it's going to be mushy gushy. If your hair has too much protein, it's going to be dry and brittle. So you need to balance the two to maintain the structural integrity of your hair. Now my hair is very low porosity. It's extremely dry, super dry naturally. Very, very, very tough. So if you guys would like to know how my hair has become soft and supple, the things I do to actually impart moisture to my hair, I'd love to share with you all exactly how I do that in another video. But of course, again, let me know down below if that's something you all are open to seeing. Hey, my Z stars. So before we move on to the next point, I have a few questions for you all. How much does your hair grow in one month? Answer in the comments down below. How much does your hair grow in one year? Let me know in the comments down below. Do you retain all the hair that grows out of your scalp? Let me know again in the comments down below. What do you do in order to retain your hair length and protect your ends? Let me know in the comments down below. Okay, thanks y'all. Let's get right back to the video. I'm excited to see what you guys have to say. Now grease is absolutely number one for me. I love grease. Now I've used a number of other sealants and I still use them, but grease is by far the one that is superior to every sealant I've ever used in my life. Now the video that precedes this talks a lot about grease, so I'm not going to go into super great detail, but ultimately what grease is is petrolatum. It's a super high power sealant. And why are sealants important for your hair to retain length? Well, you see, if your ends don't have enough moisture, they will break off and they will split. You will not be able to retain length. Now for me, that's been one of my biggest struggles, actually keeping my ends moisturized long enough in order for them to not break off. And the only thing that has kept my hair from breaking is grease. 
So I stand grease, I love grease. And if you all would like to see a dedicated video about how I use grease in my regimen, including on my scalp, please let me know. For those of you that suffer from dry scalp and extremely like desert dry hair and you live in a dry climate on top of that struggle, that video would definitely be for you. So comment down below and let me know. Now there's a method to using grease. Your hair has to be super moisturized, which is why it's super important to deep condition. And it's important to make sure that you use a high quality leave-in when you're using grease. These are the two things I do to ensure that grease doesn't have the negative side effects that a lot of naturals talk about. I mean, you can't put grease on your dry hair. It's not going to allow moisture to enter the hair shaft. However, if there's a lot of moisture in your hair shaft, then it's going to keep that moisture in there and that moisture ain't gonna go anywhere. When I use grease, my hair stays moisturized for up to two, three weeks. It's pretty insane. Now again, I know I've already said this, but I would just like to reiterate that I use grease because nothing, nothing has kept my hair intact, my ends intact the way grease has. Now some alternatives to grease that I still love and actually still use from time to time, depending on how I'm feeling, depending on what I'm doing with my hair, are these. Shea butter, cocoa butter, some thicker oils, carrot oil, which is one of my new favorites, almond oil, which has been one of my favorites for a very long time because your girl hates coconut oil, and I have a video all about that right here. But that short digression aside, and lanolin, which is essentially sheep sebum. These are other incredible sealants that I personally can get behind. <laughs> Now our ends suffer if they're rubbing against cotton because they're losing moisture and experiencing friction. Even the wind, the rain, the elements in general can have a negative effect on the ends of our hair. And a lot of people experience breakage simply because they're allowing their ends to rub up against everything and anything. Now that kind of friction, that kind of wear and tear is what causes ends to split and to break off. Buns and other styles that keep your ends tucked away very well are best for moisture retention and ultimately length retention. Now, when it comes to keeping your ends tucked away, that also means ensuring that you're wearing a nightcap. Using satin pillowcases is probably a better idea as well as wearing a satin or silk nightcap. Now, personally, when I'm at home, I keep my hair in a bun. There's no reason for me to have my hair rubbing up against my body or my clothing. That's just going to cause my ends to dry out and break off. Now, if I wanna be doing my slain mama outside, you best believe I will. I'm gonna let my ends be flying free. <laughs> but when I'm indoors, there's no reason to flex. Now I've talked about this in a few videos. I'm going to link one of my most popular videos that I talk about this in right here so you guys can check that out. And it's really important to trim your ends if you actually want to retain length. Now that is not because your ends have anything to do with what's going on with your scalp. Literally people say, oh if you trim your ends your hair will grow faster. No, that's a myth and that's extremely fallible logic. If you trim your ends, you will retain more length, which is why it will seem like your hair is growing faster, but that's more of a transitive effect and it's not a direct effect. So yeah, sis, yeah, bro, yeah, genderless person or somebody who identifies with multiple genders. That's really just not how that goes. Damaged hair will only continue to split up the hair shaft. Meaning that the longer you prolong a necessary trim, the more hair you're going to have to trim off and the less length you will retain. I've been doing micro trims lately because I'm generally quite scissor happy. I literally be chopping off like an inch of hair when I don't need to. So that's another reason why my hair likes to stay at one length as opposed to trimming off like an inch. I'll trim off less than a centimeter basically and my ends still feel fantastic. So over the course of a year, I'll probably still trim off like maybe an inch of hair. It's really great and it's been working for me so far. Now, sis, bro, everybody in between or everybody who's off of that spectrum, let me tell you, like, <laughs> Henna has changed my destiny. Henna has changed my life. My hair has been flourishing since I've introduced henna. Now my strands are fine to medium. They were pretty delicate. They're much stronger now. That could be the way I'm approaching my diet and it's definitely also aided by the henna. But I feel like it's also growing out of my scalp thicker. 
but we'll get into that in another video let me know down below if that's something you're interested in seeing my hair is super strong and resistant to breakage and damage now again i've made videos about most of these things so there's no need for me to go into extreme depth you guys can click right here and check out that video it's really great i talk about all the benefits of henna and how it thickens the hair strand and makes your hair appear denser as a result of that strand thickening ultimately what it does is it binds to the hair shaft and adds girth to it, strengthens it, fills in any holes. You guys can see that in this video linked right here. Now this one is where we get to talk about how protective styling is really great for your natural hair. I made a video all about that. I hope I didn't run out of cars so you guys can check that out. If I did, I will link it down in the description box below. But ultimately, protective styling for me has helped my hair to see the greatest lengths. Every time I've experienced a plateau, I protective styled my hair for two to three months and I've been able to overcome it. Protective styling is phenomenal because it keeps your ends tucked away for an extended period of time. You're literally not manipulating your hair. You're forced to keep your hair protected. Now, one of my favorite ways to protective style is by wearing cornrows and wigs. Now with this wig, I'm actually not wearing cornrows. I'm wearing some twists. They're not really mini twists, nor are they big twists. They're like medium sized kinky twists with my natural hair and they legit look like extensions because your girl is draping or whatever. But digression aside, I'm wearing twists underneath this wig and it's really nice because I love wearing my twists out but if I feel like giving them a break I just put my hair in two French braids I pop on a wig cap pop on this slay mama wig curled by none other than it's Gigi Jasmine the baddest DJ in the world and I'm good to go now I did talk about how I'm going to show you all my cornrow pattern for super thick natural hair which I will do but if you're not about the cornrow life this method works too do note however that your wigs will not be as flat towards the back now my wig is really bulky in the back but because I have so many bundles and this hair is such high quality it's masked very very well I'd like to leave you all with one bonus tip and this one I feel like at this point I'm going to be including in every one of my videos because everything that I am in life everything that I've become all of my successes all of my dreams and accomplishments I can attribute to prayer and affirmation now I know for some of you that's going to be pretty controversial but this is my channel sis or bro or anybody in between or not even on the spectrum <laughs> i'm finna talk about what i want to talk about and this is my truth what has really helped me in my journey especially for length retention is prayer and affirmation now i was struggling for a long time trying to get my hair to behave and i didn't know what to do right around the time i started praying about this particular matter is when I randomly stumbled upon grease. As soon as I started using grease, my story changed, literally. <laughs> I pray every day for the things I want in life. My beauty, my hair, my skin, my body, those things are important to me, so I actually invest time in taking care of them. But most importantly, I invest time in praying for those parts of who I am. I also speak positively about my hair. And again, in this video, the video that precedes this one, I talk all about that. So there's no need for me to go in depth here when you guys can easily check out that video, which is going to be in the description box down below and in the cards. Now, no matter what you believe, it's extremely important to think positively, to be positive, to feel positive, and to say positive things. There's really no getting around that. I'm a firm believer in certain spiritual principles that any individual can exercise no matter what it is that you believe. Now as for me, I choose to believe in Christ and it is my firm belief that these spiritual principles are as a result of that divinity. This is just what I believe. You're free to believe and to do as you wish. So everyone, I hope this was helpful. Again, length retention is the only reason why your hair doesn't appear to actually be gaining any length, AKA growing. Your hair is definitely growing, trust me. And if you want to aid growth, then there are ways to do that. If you guys would like videos on that, let me know. I have this one video using eggs to grow my hair and inch overnight, which 
which I'll put in the description box. But hey, digression aside, <laughs> thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was extremely helpful. I love you all so much. I'm so grateful that you're joining me on my journey and it is my sincere hope and prayer that everything that I am enriches and blesses everything that all of you are. Now, I'm definitely not perfect. I'm definitely not 100% righteous or flawless, but my journey I'm sure can be a learning experience for you. Thank you for tuning in. You're really fantastic. I really appreciate you and I can't wait to see you back for another video. God bless you. I love you and see you soon.